So far, our game can only be played on a keyboard, but it's far more likely for someone to want to play it on a touch-enabled device. So we're going to add a touch layer in this phase. We're going to add touch object types. We're going to add a special global variable to track whether you're on a touch-enabled device, as well as the events and actions necessary to be able to play the game on a touch-enabled device. The first thing we need to do is to add our touch object to the project. Go to Projects bar, and under Object Types, Insert New Object. Find the special touch object under Input, and click Insert. It'll add to the project. Take a look at the properties. Remember, Use Mouse Input is handy for testing, but make sure you set it to No when you ultimately publish. Let's go to Layers. We're going to add a Touch Layer, capital T, and make sure it's unlocked and enabled. It should be on top of the HUD layer. Let's set some of the properties of the touch layer next. Initially, we want to make it invisible. So set initial visibility to invisible. We will make it visible once we know someone's on a touch enabled device. Now go to projects, insert new object. We're going to create our touch controls. The first one is a sprite called touch left. You can put that outside of the layout. Browse and find the touch left graphic. Go to set polygon option and have it guess the polygon shape. Now we need to set the origin. X will be 79 and Y will be 32. We're going to make our touch controls pretty much all the same way, but this is our left touch control. Now we're going to create the touch right arrow. Also a sprite. The name is Touch Right, capital T, capital R. Put that outside the layout. Use the folder to navigate to Touch Right, 79 by 64. Guess the polygon shape. Set the origin to X is 0 and Y is 32. It's important that these be set correctly so that we're able to position them well. Let's create the other two arrows using the same process. Go to Object Types and insert a new object. This one's going to be Touch Up, capital T, capital U. Obviously, it's a sprite. Click somewhere outside the layout. Navigate to the Touch Up 64 by 79. Guess the polygon size. And for origin, 3279 for Y. OK. Now we need our Touch Down arrow, add that, insert, new object, sprite, touch down, capital T, capital D, click somewhere outside the layout, navigate to the touch down 64 by 79 image, guess the polygon shape, and your origin, x should be 32, y should be 0. Okay, now we need to create our touchpad uh, family, and we're going to add all of our arrows that we've created to it, all of our touch arrows. So scroll down and right click on families, add family, include all of the touch arrows by shift clicking, add, OK. We're going to rename this to touch pad, capital T, capital P. This is going to make some of our programming easier by grouping these common um, object types together. We're going to assign a behavior to it, right click, family behaviors, and we're going to assign the pin behavior. Remember, we're going to position and pin using that guide throughout this project. So there is your pin behavior. Next we're going to create our touch button. This is what allows you to fire on a touch enable device. Insert new object type, call it a sprite, touch button, capital T, capital B. Click somewhere outside the layout. Using the folder, navigate to Touch Button 80 by 80. Go back to Set Collision Polygon and Set to Bounding Box. We want to be generous with uh, the touching. 40 by 40 should be the origin point right in the center. And that is our Touch Button. We need to assign the pin behavior to the Touch Button, so find it. Right click, Behaviors, and under General, select Pin. Excellent. Now we're going to go and do our coding. We need to go to our game event sheet and we're going to add actions to position and pin the touch objects. So that goes all the way in the start event group. 
on the on start of layout event. Awesome. Add an action. We're going to deal with the touchpad family. We're going to choose set position to another object. Remember, we want to position it to the guide and then pin it to the guide. So for object, it should be guide. And the image point is one we created earlier for touchpad. Inside double quotes, capital T, capital P, and press done. Next thing we're going to do is pin it. Add action, touchpad family, pin to object, pin to guide, and remember it's position only. So that takes care of our arrows. Now we need to do the same thing for our touch button. So add action, choose the touch button, and we're going to set position to another object under size and position to the guide using the image point that we created earlier, touch button in double quotes, capital T, capital B. Once we have positioned the button, we need to pin it. So we need to add another action. Choose touch button, go down to pin to object, pin to guide, and position only. Awesome. So now we have our touch controls. They've been positioned and pinned. We're going to need a global variable to track whether someone is playing on a touch enabled device or not. So scroll to the top of the event sheet and you're going to right click to create a new global variable. We're going to create a global variable called is touch device, upper camel case. It's going to be a number, initially zero, and the description is whether user is playing on a touch enabled device, where zero is false and one is true. This will allow us to know whether to show the controls or not. Now we're going to create a mobile event group for all of our device detection and mobile support. Right click, add group, call it mobile, the capital M. Our description is going to be events and triggers that support play on mobile devices. And press OK. We need to create our device detection event and some actions. So click add event and choose touch on any touch start. Next, we need to right click and add another condition to the event. We're going to be adding a system compare two variables condition. What we need to do is we need to compare the is touch device global variable, checking to see whether it's equal to zero. We're adding this condition to make sure that touch device detection happens only once. If these conditions are met, we're going to add some actions, add action system, and we're going to set the value of is touch device to one. This sets the global variable. So we have it throughout. Let's add another action, which shows the touch layer. Go to system, set layer visible under layers and layout. We only want to do this once. We are going to make the touch layer visible. So all this code right here seeks to do the device detection and do it only once. Drag this event inside the mobile event group. And now you have mobile device detection built into the game. The next thing we need to do is add a series of events that allows us to control the spaceship using the touch controls. We're going to place these events under the spaceship is active event that allows us to uh, toggle it on and off. Scroll down and click add event. We're going to be adding a touch event. Choose is touching object. The first one we're going to do is for the touch up touch control. So choose that for object. When we touch the touch up control, we want to simulate the spaceship moving up. So we're going to add an action, choose spaceship and under eight direction, choose simulate control. We want to simulate the control of the spaceship going up whenever the touch up button is pressed. To make this easy, we're just going to go ahead and copy this event and then change out the things that are different. So you can copy paste. Let's go ahead and create the touch down event. You can change the object to touch down and change up to down for simulate control. Then let's go ahead, let's do touch left, just replace the object and then change the control to left. Do the same thing for the touch right event.
Awesome. Now we can take all of these and place them inside the spaceship event group. At the very top of that spaceship is active check. Right there. Now we'll be able to control the spaceship with the touch controls as well as with the keyboard. Last but not least, we need to be able to fire lasers with our touch button. So go to the keyboard space bar is down event, right click, make it an or block and add another condition. We're going to add a touch condition. We want to know whether the touch button is being pressed. So choose is touching object and for object, choose touch button. Now lasers will fire whether we use the space bar or whether the touch button is being pressed. Go to layers, lock the touch layer because we're done with that. And let's go back and check the touch object. To test this on a PC, we need to make sure that the use mouse input is set to yes. Remember, before you publish, you set that to no. Let's debug our project. Click with our mouse. The touch buttons will appear, the touch pad and the touch button, and you should be able to use them to control the spaceship. Now, obviously, we still need to test on a touch enabled device, but this gives us assurance that our code is working. Make sure you test every single part of the pad as well as the firing button. Take a moment to test and once you feel comfortable, go back to the project and make sure that you save it.